saying this is facilitating uh, big uh, bubbles that have made a revolution in the middle of the surgery. And this fascinating big bubbles made a revolution in my mind regarding treating keratoconus. Uh, that, as we have uh, heard uh, just now, uh, has a, a lot of uh, advantages. No endothelial rejection, no graft failure, extra of the procedure, early rehabilitation of the patient, and short term with steroid therapy. All these are great advantages for that. And as we have heard also in the session, that we have a lot of things to treat cut corners. We have uh, risk gas balance contact lenses, organ collagen cross linking, uh, intact scalar ring, topographic right ablation, and second IOL, and keratoplasty. Uh, after the introduction of that, I have changed my mind and I have jumped from uh, treating keratoconus. Uh, uh, directly after failure of uh, contact lenses and cross-linking to doing that. Because uh, for the intracorneal ring segments, the very specific and early cases, is the very unpredictable result, and being a reversible, which uh, is considered an advantage, this means that it's always to move. So this is uh, uh, not, uh, in my mind, is a disadvantage and not an advantage. Uh, for the topography guided aspects ablation and ascent protocol, I am not convinced by the idea of uh, uh, weakening the cornea more because the cornea is already weak. And as regards the second toric intraocular lens implantation, I am also uh, not convinced by the idea because the problem is in the cornea with the irregular astigmatism and I'm treating the cornea problem with, with implanting an intraocular lens. With PKB, we know, uh, all of us know about the uh, complications of graft rejection, graft failure, and that quality, high band corneal and interocular hemorrhage, the complications, and the long term steroid therapy. All these things led me to come back again to the major surgery as a, a, a good and uh, alternative uh, treatment for uh, graft corners. Uh, the problem of lamellar surgery in the past was the interface. At the past, the interface was between stroma and versus stroma. Like this uh, video, you will see the stroma interface is somewhat rough. But now with deep anterior lamellar keratoplasty, the interface is between the stroma and the membrane, and as you see, it is a perfect clean interface. To compare again between uh, stroma versus stroma, here and stroma versus distance membrane. Uh, I will take the opportunity uh, to describe my own technique of doing uh, talc. I will take it step by step. Step number one is marking corneal center. Uh, I, I'm using caliber to have uh, equidistant uh, marks from the limbus, superior, inferior, and temporal and nasal. And then finding the anatomical center is very important in keratoconus patients because uh, the, the cone may make some displacement of the uh, pupil. Another way of marking the cornea is the ordinary one, uh, measuring the corneal diameter and then uh, making half of it vertical and horizontal direction. The second step of uh, that is uh, terrifying adjustment. You have to be familiar with your suction terrifying and you have to be familiar with the zero position of the terrifying blade and you have to be familiar that every turn of this uh, blade make a 60%, 60 micron cut in the cornea. So this is, you have to adjust the terrifying before uh, applying to the patient and to have a guarded cut and to actually it will be a partial thickness terrifying. Step number three is partial thickness terrifying. Keeping in mind uh, this uh, rule that I have mentioned before, we do a partial thickness terrifying. Uh, our aim is from 240 to 300 micron depth, and they have to check the depth of the terrifying, and if it's still not deep enough, I can slightly uh, deepen it by uh, super blade. Step number four is this step, the big bubble formation. The formation of the big bubble is the key step in that technique. The battle is won or lost at this step. The signs of uh, forming big bubble are uh, very uh, important. I have to have a circular well-defined uh, white color in, uh, in contrary to the interstromal air, it's just
just with the feathery edges. Uh, the uh, endocrine pressure has to be high after ejection, and uh, we will use what's called small bubble tip. These are some examples of big bubble formation. Uh, this is uh, my old technique of using the uh, infinite needle, injecting in the stroma, and then you will find that this is the bubble coming with its characteristic uh, circular appearance. Again, another example, injecting in the stroma, and again, the bubble is coming with its characteristic circular appearance. As you see, it is very well delineated border. Again, another example with characteristic circular appearance. This is an example of a large uh, diffuse bubble. Again, it has a very characteristic circular appearance. This is another example. Another example of a very big bubble. All these are examples of obtaining big bubble from the first injection. This is the example of impacts after failure of impacts in one patient. I have also did for him that, and I have got the big bubble from the first injection. Some surgeons prefer to do laminar dissection first and then inject in the stroma to be nearer the distance membrane and to obtain a big bubble as uh, in this case, uh, again, from the first injection. Again, it is, has a characteristic well-defined circular appearance. My preferred technique now is doing the groove and then making a very small laminar dissection and making a very small hole by insulin needle. And then by a blunt spatula, we make a groove or a tunnel in the stroma as deep as we can. And then we go with the uh, cannula with a bevel down and inject air. This technique uh, makes the success rate is very high, being a very uh, near distance membrane and with blunt instruments, not sharp instruments. And this is the big bubble again after single injection. Uh, we can uh, have the big bubble after many injections. This is the first injection, but we have failed to have big bubble, and we have this bubble after second injection. You may have the bubble even after five injections. This is the first injection. You don't have the big bubble yet. The tension is still soft. You do second injection. You don't have the bubble yet. And you have some bubbles here under the venativa. The third injection, not yet. Don't lose your uh, epithelium. The fourth injection, not yet. And with the fifth injection, you have got the bubble. And this will be clear now after uh, delaminating the coronary stroma. And this is after finishing the case. The types of big bubble, it may be like this one, progressive, coming slowly, and it may be like this one, coming suddenly. You see, it's sudden uh, expulsion of the bubble, and this is coming very gradually. To, to be sure that you have the big bubble, you, what you do what is called the small bubble tip. The idea is injecting air in the anterior chamber, and air will be trapped in the periphery of the anterior chamber because the center of the anterior chamber is occupied by the bubble. Like this example, this is a big bubble, and if you want to be sure, just inject a small amount of air in the anterior chamber, and you will find that this air is trapped here and doesn't go to the center of the anterior chamber. Of course, not always success. We may have failure of big bubble. This is my first case of that three years ago, injecting. I have perforated distance membrane, and I have injected directly in the anterior chamber. This is one case of uh, failures. Uh, sometimes when you, you, you put the scannula in a wrong plane, in superficial plane, what, whatever uh, you inject, it always makes a stromal emphysema and you fail to have the big bubble. Another example of failure is you have what's called the burst bubble. When you have the bubble, it suddenly bursts in the anterior chamber. Like this one, you have already a big bubble and then you have it burst in the anterior chamber. This is the burst bubble. One uh, form of failure. This is the mechanism how the big bubble uh, burst in the anterior chamber. The step number five is the laminar dissection. It's an easy step. Uh, you uh, make a laminar dissection to be back the cornea, preparing for the next step to open the roof of the big bubble. This one example. Sometimes when I find that the air is making everything is white, I make a violet uh, staining of the of the edge of the cornea to help in dissection. Step number six is the opening the roof of the bubble. This is again a very difficult step. It has to be done very cautiously. 
The idea is the super, super blade to open the roof of the bubble. This bubble will escape and the small bubble will move to the center. As we will see now, you have to make a large opening in the roof and you will observe now that the small bubble here is going to the center of the anterior chamber. Another example, you have to make as large as you can. Yes. This suggests how to make safety during opening the big bubble is to put a heron on the surface and then open the roof. This heron will suppress the rapid ingress of air and this is the big bubble trapped in the heron and it will make the opening safe. Step number seven is uh, uh, making a crochet incision and stromal cutting. After uh, opening the space, we fill it again with viscous material and with a blunt tip chisel, we do a crochet incision in the cornea and remove the four uh, stromal slabs with the right and left corneal scissors as you show in this video here. You have to be careful not to overstretch the corneal tissue and not to, 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 to do much pressure over the growth to avoid rupture of testis membrane. And this is the membrane after uh, it has been built. This is examples of different uh, eyes with different types. All uh, looks very nice and very neat interface. Uh, though advanced and computerized, the film to second technology couldn't achieve the accurate results the simple mechanical air bubble can do. Step number eight is uh, tunnel preparation. Uh, we do this is the first technique. <coughs> we, by a smelt sponge, we try to elevate the edge and then catch the edge with McPherson forceps and try to have it uh, as one piece. This is another example. It's sticking to a certain point and uh, by a sponge, you make a mechanical uh, deployment, then catching the membrane and, uh, and <coughs> trying to have it as a one, one piece. This is another way of doing the donor preparation, especially if we can do uh, dark and demic at the same time. We do that for one patient and they make for another patient. So we have to prepare the, the donor material in a separate, in a, in a, uh, in a very neat way. I'm now sealing the testis membrane to have it as a demic uh, uh, implant. Step number nine, the last step is suturing. Suturing doesn't have uh, a lot of changes uh, from uh, penetrating keratoplasty. Whether we do continuous suturing, uh, but we have to be very careful during suturing not to injure this membrane, so we have to be slightly careful uh, and looking uh, very uh, uh, closely to the tip of the needle, and otherwise not to make a perforation of this membrane at this stage. And this is an example of a continuous suturing, which almost the same as penetrating cardioplasty, and this is an example of uh, interrupted sutures, Again, uh, no big difference between dark and uh, PKP in suturing the technique, except we have to be careful uh, not to injure this membrane during suturing. And this uh, example of the interrupted suture at the end of the operation. Again, this example of continuous suture at the end of the operation. And this uh, one interrupted and the other is continuous at the end of the operation. Uh, sometimes if we fail to have the big bubble, we can continue the case as uh, with manual dissection to have what is called the pre-dysmatic DAC. Pre-dysmatic DAC, in my opinion, it is still much better than PKB because we have all the advantages of DAC. The only drawback is this rough interface, but the great advantages of being an extra procedure with professional drone and mycelium uh, outweighs the, the, the slight uh, uh, decline in visual acuity. This is some example post-operative day one, and this again, another example, uh, third day post-operative. Uh, however, that is not always as easy as it seems. It has its difficulties and complications, uh, and this uh, mo uh, the very important complication is rapid in the brain. Excuse me, it's not uh, are you finishing? Please, five seconds. And this is another example of uh, rupture of distance membrane during dissection. And this is the last example of uh, losing the case because of rupture of distance membrane. And uh, thank you very much for your kind attention.
thank you very much, Dr. Atamish, and this uh, ends our session. And now we are waiting for uh, the guest speakers. Dr. Albert Dexter. <laughs>